went to his job and said and, and talked to the manager and told the manager, y'all need to drug test ghosts because he be smoking weed. <laughs> she told Maya he didn't even have to take a fucking drug test to work at Taco Bell to begin with. Apparently it didn't work. Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Angelique from, of course, Miss Angelique TV, where we talk about everything and what I mean everything. I mean, niggas getting bitches evicted and shit. Like, yeah, for real. I know I'm a little behind, but that's because I had a little technical difficulty to with um, Final Cut Pro and uh, MacBook Air. We're gonna probably catch up by tomorrow. Let's jump back to the story. Before that, I discussed how he stole all my money. Like, I gave it all to him. I was broke. I had to go to my grandfather's funeral, which is unexpected. And I had to spend a lot of money in Arizona. And so by the time I came back to Arizona, I was fucking shit broke, okay? And so that was in March. And you know, I was also missing work because of that as well. And I was not getting paid. April came, well, you know, the start of April came. And y'all know it's the first of the month, like rent due. And so I was so broke because like I said, I had um, gave Ghost $2,000 plus bought him a um, gift for his birthday, not including the um the trip and i also had to spend over two thousand dollars for my car because my car had finally got out of the shop as y'all know like a couple story times ago i told y'all my car had been in the shop so i was carless for a long time i probably carless for about 10 months honestly because my car was in shop that long because it was so much going on um I could have gotten my car out a long time ago, but I got fucked by the mechanic. Whenever I ran into those big lumps of money, which I um, spoke about in my last few story times. So, um, whenever I ran into that type of money, I went ahead and also paid to get my car out. Mind y'all, whenever I paid to get my car out, my car wasn't even fucking fixed, y'all. That's a whole nother story time. Beginning of the month came, and I was missing a lot of days on my check because I was in Arizona for my um, grandfather's funeral and I hadn't been working. By the time Ghost came back from New Orleans, which he was in New Orleans at the same time as me, well, he was in a, he was in New Orleans the same time I was in Arizona. By the time he came back from New Orleans, he had probably about $300. I don't know what the fuck he was doing with his money. I know now what he was doing with his money. I'm gonna just say this, cause I know y'all probably like, girl, what he did. I promise y'all we gonna get to that, like it's, it's getting closer and closer. But um, come to find out he was putting it on another bitch, but I'm gonna just leave it right there. I'm gonna leave it at that because I know y'all gonna have a lot to say a lot of questions and we gonna get into that but he was so broke because I didn't find it out until you know months later but he was spending it on his ex okay yeah so like I said I'm not gonna say too much about it because you gotta tune in girl came home with about $300 he was broke as hell I was broke as hell I didn't have much of the money left from whenever I um and I feel like he stole from me because I knew for a fact I had like $400 or something put put up before I went to Arizona and I was looking for this fucking money and I thought to myself maybe I spent it but then I thought again like I don't think I spent it because I purposely took a thousand dollars or a little bit over a thousand dollars with me to Arizona but whenever I came back it was fucking gone because I knew I had to pay pay rent so I purposely put like four hundred dollars to the side but I could not fucking find it but I you know psych myself into thinking that maybe i just accidentally spent it but i believe he stole that from me i really do i feel like, i feel like he stole that from me and figured that you know i had so much money that i wasn't gonna notice it but my nigga i did so if you're watching this ghost which i'm sure you are because you you care about what people think about you so um honey fuck you i know what you did rent came or whatever first of the month and you, my apartment that i was staying in at the time you have until the third to pay the rent without any late fees. After the third, come the fourth. On the fourth, it's the full amount of rent plus $50. After $50, it's $10 a day after the fifth, every single day. Days went by and I didn't know what to do. Honestly, I, I was so afraid to ask him for money or I knew he didn't have anything because like I said, my bills were well over $1,000 not including my fucking rent. My rent was at that time $1,200. Uh, yeah, I was paying like about twelve hundred a month just for rent itself. Okay, sweetheart, not including cable, lights, not including none of that. Rent itself was about twelve hundred dollars, and I know, I knew even if he did give me some of the money, like it wouldn't even make a difference anyway. But he 
always would ask me, you got everything, you you know, you everything covered, the bills covered. Like, he will always ask me that. He would never help me, of course, but he will always ask me. And you know me, I was a, I honestly, I printed, pretended a lot with him because I didn't want him to worry or want him to feel like he has to go somewhere else. Like, I know this, let me tell y'all what I'm about to say is stupid, but I'm just telling y'all how I felt back then. I didn't want to worry him or feel, or, or I um, put any type of pressure on him like I just wanted to make him so happy that I always made it seem like everything was okay even whenever he was asking me for money that I didn't really have okay babe here go yo $350 that you're asking me for even though I have to pay $1,200 in rent and my check is only so and so amount of money like I would still do it I, I pretended a lot with him pretended like everything was okay because he would always asked me you got it you got it everything good and I'm like yeah I got it you know everything good with which at this time, bitch, it was fucking looking bad as hell. Like, it was looking bad for me, okay? And my mama was gone at the time, as y'all know, from my last story time. She had moved out. So, it was just me and um, my struggle, basically. On the 10th of April, I got a knock at the door. Mind y'all, it was a very aggressive knock. Like, it wasn't like a regular knock. It was a very fucking aggressive knock. And, mind y'all, it was about 6 o'clock in the morning. And so, I'm like my nigga what the fuck is going on went and he looked in the people he was like it's a police officer and, and he was so fucking paranoid y'all like he he wasn't like he wasn't the the manly type like he told me go see what he want so i opened the door and he like behind me or whatever and the man it was the sheriff or whatever and i'm surprised that he didn't hear me here hear what the the man was saying but he was like basically i forgot exactly what he said but he was like basically these are your eviction papers. I'm here to serve you your eviction papers. And then I have to sign or whatever. And it told me a court date on there. I think the court date was like 20th or something or something like that. And so I didn't come out. I didn't close the door with the papers in my hand. I had like some type of a vase in the, in the front of my door outside. So I knew ghosts behind me. And if I would have came out with some fucking papers, came, came, you know, back in the house with some papers, he was going to want to know what they were or what they were about. So before I closed the door, as the sheriff, after I signed off on it or whatever, and I had the door kind of cracked so he couldn't really see or understand what was going on or what was being said. So I had signed off and then as the sheriff was um, leaving or whatever, I had dropped the papers in the little base outside my door because like I said I did not want him to know because I was so afraid like I said I was so fucking timid I didn't want him to know that I was struggling I didn't want him to know any of that so he didn't fucking know so whenever I uh, closed the door and came back in the house he was like what that was about I told him that they were looking for my mama now I said that because my mama was already dealing with stuff for probation and stuff like that like whenever she got out of jail that previous september she was supposed to like follow up with her probation officer and stuff like that she wasn't even supposed to be in houston at that time these story times are not for entertainment these story times well it's for entertainment but it's mainly to make sure y'all motherfuckers don't do the same thing like if angie did it don't do it okay if angie is telling you not to do it don't do it i'm making the you know how people be like don't you know make the same mistakes i did I feel the same way about y'all. If Angelique say don't do it, don't do it, okay? So he believed it. So at this point, I'm like, okay, bitch, you gotta move. You gotta fucking move. Um, because you obviously can't pay the rent. Because at that time the rent was like really, really high. It would have been less expensive for me to move than to actually pay the rent there where I was and to stay there. So I, what did I tell him? I think I told him like I no longer felt comfortable living there and plus the rent was too high This is what I was telling him, you know, I'm not not comfortable being here no more the rent too high and you know People knocking on my door looking for my money and stuff like that. So I want to fucking move. I was so Desperate to move that <laughs> I moved in a place that I'll never fucking move to again Okay, one thing about this particular apartment complex. It wasn't too far from where I stayed but it was a big difference, okay? And once you cross these particular train tracks, it's like the whole neighborhood got different. And I've never stayed in a ghetto before. I'm not trying to be booty or anything like that. But honestly, y'all, I've never stayed in a ghetto before. I've never lived in a ghetto. Like, whenever I was living with my mom, like, we already, always stayed in nice places, you know? This particular place had, on, on the sign, it was like $3.99 move-in special. That's what it was. $3.99 move-in special. And... Whenever I said $3.99 moving special, like everything was covered. Your first month rent, security deposit, everything was covered. Everything was 
that month all that month and so being that I, I was getting ready to get paid for my job but the money wasn't gonna be that as much so I knew how much money it was gonna be and so whenever I saw that I'm like okay maybe we can make it work because I mean it's in my budget because my check's not gonna be that much because I only supposed to work like three days or something but let me tell y'all another thing anytime you see a place that said $3.99 moving special or something really really cheap Bitch is a motherfucking catch because you ain't gonna be happy. It's gonna be the ghetto. It's gonna be trash as hell. And that's exactly what the fuck it was. But, you know, I was so desperate to move. I didn't I didn't want him to know that we were getting evicted. We moved into this place, y'all. If I could get pictures of this place, I will. It was a fucking nightmare, okay? It was a nightmare. Like, first of all, the parking lot was totally to fuck up. Like, it had potholes everywhere and stuff like that. Second of all, the pool was never open. Like, the pool, it was the summer, well, it was about to be summertime, but it was hot as hell. Like, I'm in Houston, and it's April. Like, it's hot as fuck at this point. The pool was never open. They had a lot of kids outside, a lot of people outside. Like, the parking was horrible. The area was just fucking horrible, okay? Whenever we moved in, we had nothing but roaches. Like, you know how sometimes you move in places, a place that has been vacant for a while, sometimes they may have a little roach here and there, too or whatever because it's been empty for a while and you know these motherfucking roaches didn't find their way home so you know sometimes it happened but this particular place like i'm thinking oh you know it's just the roaches you know whenever as we moved in and by the way i had no help with the whole moving process like i have to pay for the u-haul i have to borrow money and i'm not a borrow money type bitch you feel me like i've always had money like people always would borrow money from me but i was doing so bad at this point in my life which i would never go back to ever again i vow myself to never be broke for any nigga or to be broke period um and so i was stressing out about the u-haul i had my aunt all the way from the freaking bahamas because i do have family in the bahamas she sent me some money or whatever to get a u-haul it was so many roaches like roaches coming out the fucking sink roaches coming from behind the refrigerator it was fucking nasty so we, we spraying the stuff trying to make stuff work y'all these roaches ain't really the roach problem went down maybe a little bit but we were only there for a month <laughs> Which we got evicted from that place too. But that's another story time. Hey girl. Since my mama wasn't there, like I told y'all in my last story time, he had the ability or felt like he had the ability to do whatever the fuck he wanted to do. So, and that's what he did. I catch him talking to bitches and stuff like that. But we're gonna get into that in my next story time. So, stay tuned because these next two story times, like I'm gonna give y'all a warning. These next two story times... One of them gonna be like, bitch, are you serious? And another one gonna be really, really graphic because um, that's when he started putting his hands on me. And I got pictures and all of that. So, if you are, you know, interested in that, stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, turn on the notifications because you don't want to miss it. And I realized on my last video I didn't do a moral, so let me go ahead and do a moral real quick. Moral of this story is basically it's simple don't let no nigga make you broke like at all especially if he's not contributing like my nigga you you make eight dollars my bills are more than eight dollars an hour more number two is if you broke or if you feel like a nigga is pulling you down don't be afraid to let that nigga know like don't be like me and be struggling secretly like don't do that like what the, what the fuck are you pretending for like for what who are who is he like as if he fucking bill gates and i'm trying to make it seem like i got it all too like nigga i don't i'm, I'm not rich like i don't i don't got it like that trying to impress a nigga who make eight fucking dollars an hour like come on i don't i don't remember when the last time i made that much money i was 16. at that time he was 22. like i said i'm not judging but the type of bills that i had i did not have no eight dollars an hour type bills neither did i have ten dollars an hour type bills didn't even have twelve dollars an hour type bills like i did i'm just gonna keep it real and yeah just don't do that a big mistake don't let no, nobody control you don't let nobody put you down because honestly y'all i was doing good before he came into my life and it's like my life just slowly went downhill the longer we were together the more my life went down that hill and i have never been in that place before like even with my last relationship i was having you know a little financial issues because he wasn't really contributing as much however i was never in that position to where I'm getting kicked out, I'm getting, I'm, I'm late on my rent. Like, I, it was never that until I met Ghost. So, yeah, y'all, that's about it. And um, just stay tuned to our next two, next few story times, rather, because it's going to get serious, like, serious as fuck. Stay tuned, and I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Bye.
because of the little five minute walk or whatever he will come home and then most of the times my mama and i would have like either the air off or the heat on because at the time it was still cold and um he would come at the house whenever we would have the heat on or the air off he would come home pissed the fuck off like sweating bricks pissed off